Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be talking about the 5th anniversary countdown which is going to be starting on the 17th of January. Now, this is going to include a Global First co-op. I'm not too sure if there's going to be a Shinryu fight attached to this, but, so we're going to find out uh, as we get closer and closer to the event. But there, there is also going to be two double FR slash BT banners which will include a free multi-draw. Now, based off of the banners that we have of that we had in the JP side, uh, the two banners that we are predicting that are going to be releasing with this event is going to be the Renoa and Arden banner and the Lunafreya and Kane banner. So we're going to briefly talk about these four characters, and I'm going to let you guys know whether or not it is still worth pulling for any of them. So. Do let me know down in the comment section below what your plans are going to be for any of these two banners if they are the banners that we are thinking of that is going to be releasing, uh, if you're going to be pulling for them or if you're going to be holding off and saving up your resources for anniversary. Let me know down in the comment section below and of course if you, could, if you do enjoy the video don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. A big thank you to all of my YouTube members for further supporting the channel. Now, if, if you ever thought about becoming a member and further supporting the channel, you can click the first link in the description of this video or hit the join button below for details on how to become a member. And a shout out to Shinobi Ninja, Michael R, and Saiyan Plays for the continuous support. Let's continue on to the video. So let's start off with the first potential banner, which is going to be the Luna Freya slash Kane banner. Now, Luna Freya is still a very strong support character with everything that she provides, uh, with the ability to be able to grant additional turns and or fix damage, depending on which buff it is that you are granting to your teammate. Or if you're going to be using her LD ability, then that's a different story because that also that depends on the position that you have her on the team. So uh, in general, though, ha having the ability to be able to grant additional turns uh, definitely helps out especially for BT characters who are trying to set up and you don't want to waste a single turn of their BT effect before you jump into the, into the BT phase and having her on the team or as an LD call ability uh, can actually benefit you greatly. Uh, she is able to ice slash water party enchant. Uh, she is a very solid FR charger with a skill 1 being able to not only provide brave but also some very very good healing and then her BT effect is still really good. I do appreciate the fact that within her BT effect, while active, and if she is granting uh, a buff to your teammates, let's let's say like the heavy prayer buff or the quick prayer buff, uh, instead of the original turn count that it normally is. While her BET effect is active, it adds an additional turn to uh, said buff. So it's actually pretty convenient. So overall, I would say if you are on a tight budget and if you don't have uh, at the minimum her LD, I would say throw some tickets. Make sure to keep to uh, to keep yourself at a limit or a certain amount of tickets to throw at the banner if you're wanting to get her LD. Because remember, anniversary is right around the corner. We don't know what's going to be happening with that. Um, then I would say, uh, you know, keep, keep, keep a certain amount of tickets uh, to the side and then tr if, if possible, try to get yourself at the minimum her LD call. If you want to get a BT, uh, I, I, do still, I do still feel like uh, having her BT uh, is uh, very good to have. The FR is not going to be too, too important in my opinion, especially if, if you're going to be using uh, other characters FR that could potentially give a much higher HP damage bonus. Then I would say you, you, you would not have to uh, worry about picking up her F1 and just solely focus on focus on the LD and or uh, her BT weapon. But overall, Lunafair is still a very strong support character. Now with Kane, Kane is still very much, in my opinion, a very strong viable asset to any uh, team that you can set up because like with his strong follow-ups, especially with him being up in the air, I mean one, he can't get untouched. Two, his follow-ups always trigger after any action whether it be the, your team or the enemy he is going to constantly attack and whenever you send him up into the air he actually pushes pushes himself back in a turn order so you won't have to worry about him for uh, for a good minute uh which is great especially if you pair him up with uh with luna freya and you're granting additional turns to let's say your dps character and then kane is just gonna stay up in the air and constantly give you those additional follow-up attacks so kane 
very very good overall with that uh he does some he does deal some overall great damage with the rest of his kit uh he has a solid bt effect his fr it's still doo-doo overall you're really going to be pulling for his uh, ld and his bt so that you can get the added benefits from his bt effect that that uh that will help out uh with everybody including his damage and whatnot but at the same time though you're really going more so for his ld so that that way you can get them strong follow-ups while he he is in the air so uh with this banner it is a very good banner in my opinion uh it's it's gonna be a little bit tough especially for those who may be missing some of the weapons from either of these two characters uh when it comes to support uh, like i said with luna freya I would definitely go at the minimum for LD uh, with Kane. If you are needing a strong follow-up character, then I would say if you are running on a tight budget, go for the LD as well. If you can manage to get the BT, that'd be great too. But again, uh, I, I, I'm probably going to say this multiple times, but like with anniversary coming up around the corner, we don't know exactly what's going to be coming up for Globo's anniversary. So I would say make sure to set a limit on how much you are going to throw into this banner. Uh, if you if you if if there is something on this banner that you are wanting to pick up next up we'll look at the Renoa and Arnon banner now for Renoa good BT effect overall provides the party with attacker brave regen uh, HP damage up HP damage cap up and brave damage cap up and it also gives her uh, or it also grants her that nasty AoE Ultima ability which changes uh, from her HP uh, attack command which is actually a pretty destructive AoE magic attack uh, she is able to she is able to heal the party but really you're gonna be using Renoa more at, more as a magical DPS but that option is still there in case you need to use it uh, she is a strong magical DPS character I do feel like even up till now she can definitely still deal some very good numbers and with FR echo around the corner I feel like if you're gonna be relying on her FR or if you're gonna be using somebody else's FR and if you're able to increase the HP damage bonus and a good percentage i do still feel like that ultima ability that she gains from a bt effect can definitely deal some very good numbers and her fr is definitely more so for herself because i know when it comes to one of the conditions uh being it that whenever you are attacking uh a a your hp uh, has to be below 100% of max and then with Renoa she has the ability to do so by consuming some of her HP uh, after her ability so like her FR is definitely more so for herself like I said there are I mean technically in a way your other characters are able to meet set condition as well but it is limited to a small roster based off of that one condition so uh, overall I would say if you need if you need yourself a magical DPS character Renoa is a very solid option overall to to pick up uh, You definitely want to go full investment for her and picking up uh, everything within her kit And finally we'll look into Arden now Arden makes himself a uh, immortal after you use his LD ability So good luck trying to kill him unless you dispel his buffs then well that might be a different story But anyways, uh, but yeah, he makes himself immortal after you use his LD uh, he does have consistent rebreak whenever the enemies are broken, except for his skill too. But unless you do have his FR uh, active, then after two turns of the enemy, it does make them a little bit easier for them to break. So you can actually use his skill too. And every time that you break, not every time, but the first time that you do break an enemy, uh, you do actually gain an additional turn. So if the enemies are ready to get broken and, and if you use a skill too, then you can use uh, any of his other skills to re-break them afterwards so that you can push them back uh, in the turn order. Uh, his BT effect isn't too bad. It does provide uh, Brave Regen, Max Brave Up, HP Damage Cap Up, and HP Damage Up. And it is stack based and you have to, uh, it increases uh, by one up to three stacks uh, whenever you are inflicting break with Arden. Uh, his FR conditions definitely focuses on breaking a lot. So you definitely need to pair him up with characters that can easily break the enemy. Or if you want to pair him up with Sephiroth, then it will make breaking the enemy so much easier while you have his BT effect active because it makes the enemy's brave go all the way down to one or zero, whichever one of the two. Uh, so yeah, easy breakage when pairing up Sephiroth with Arden and anybody else so that, that way you can meet uh, Arden's FR conditions. And then he is a good DPS overall. 
overall but i do feel like as we start going into fl echo and within like the next like two or two to three months the enemy's hp values are gonna start going up and with arden yeah he can definitely still deal some good damage but i feel like he is going to slowly slowly uh start being a character that you may not consider using as your dps because we're, we already have like strong dps like jack garland and then later down the line we're gonna start uh, going into fr echo and then we're gonna be getting some very strong reworks for characters so i feel like arden uh he he can he can still be used right now but i do feel like uh, as we progress into anniversary and then afterwards he may not be a character that you're going to be using too too much even though i really do appreciate arden and being a uh, uh, a player that has played final fantasy 15 uh and knowing his backstory and whatnot uh, as much as i hate to say it but i'm going to be uh, honest with you guys like yeah, he, he like I said, he'll be good now, but later down the line, he, I do I do feel like he's gonna start falling off until he gets another rework at some point. Uh, but uh, other than that, though, guys, that's pretty much gonna be it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Again. I'm not 100% sure if these are going to be the two banners that are going to be featured with this upcoming Global First co-op event. So if anything, if, it, if I am uh, incorrect, uh, don't be coming at me uh, afterwards saying that you were wrong. I'm, uh, that's why I'm letting you guys know ahead of time. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.